make it easier or harder for you guys to have a, a whole history and backstory to develop your characters, or does it add to you kind of? Does it shortcut it in some way? What? Developing your characters, just having a backstory, having a history, having a. Oh yeah. You know, as opposed, to, sometimes it can be also intimidating. You don't want it. So much. I think it's nice to have a sense of where the things came from. They've got a whole. They've got a whole. Oh, that kind of information that you can delve into, and then we can create from there. I think that always helps. Yeah. yeah, I always like it. It's always great to have some sort of baseline, and then I just feel more liberated because we actually explore and make it our own, and, and take what I liked from the earlier iterations. And then, but ultimately, you know, what we found in the first and second season was that. It's what we find together, you know, which I can finally no, talk about. For the longest time, I couldn't talk about what a great scene partner he was <laughs> for the first half of the season. I'd be like, yeah, job in here. How do you partner? Are you are, like, is Laurel or, or Vogue or Ash Tyler, are they in a place to explore any romantic feelings that might still be lingering? Is it just like their head's just not in that space at the moment because they have like a planet to run? <laughs> yeah. um, I think both. I think there's a lot going on, but there's, yeah. there are intimate scenes where we do, you know, those things are. Uh, they are, they yeah. are discussed, yeah, they're brought to the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. And part of the surprise for both of us last season was that he retained folks' memories. When Laurel does the operation, I didn't think that he would, I thought I was completely exercising folks from Tyler's body. So the fact that he has the memories and can, you know, touch base with them, he's still present. And there's an emotion. very confusing. Yeah, there's an emotional component to it. It's not just neutral. And yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to have those discussions that we didn't get to have in season one. Because there, like, like we said, the end of the season, there was so much happening. There were only so many conversations to be had. Um, yeah. That whole dynamic between the two of you, was it really hard? Was it uh, really difficult for you to get in a place to, like, to play that role? I mean, that was, it was an, like, an amazing storyline. So. It was a great story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was. I, no, I don't think it was difficult. I think it was. I mean, it was all different. It was all yeah. intense and everything. But I think that's the joy of it. It was nice to go jump into that and try and see what we can find. Yeah. We don't really have much, you know, time of the day or a week yeah. before. We have to just bring what we can on the day. Yeah. You find something wherever it is. Yeah. There's some kind of magic. And there was something really beautiful about with Vogue and Laurel, starting with that, is that we these characters found each other. They're, I mean, we were <laughs> we looked completely different from ourselves. So I found myself, you know, it was like the connection that Laurel had with Vogue was very specific and the memories of him were so distinct so that when we were doing those scenes later on, uh, we, were, we were riffing off of that. We didn't even, there were some like physical moments that we had as Laurel. We tried to Laurel. reconnect things we've done as the Klingons and try to bring it back yeah. to Tyler and Laurel. And, and yeah, yeah, it was easy to create the memories because that whole, the first, when we shot the whole Klingon period, it felt yeah. really early in the year and yeah. it felt like some kind of dream. It felt like we didn't know, so it was a nice Yeah, magic. and we found that you know the, the romance was not something that was like very very strictly put in the script it was something that the characters kind of found and I was really grateful that all the two day our director for that episode and then you know all the higher ups really said oh this could be interesting and they played with it and it was really amazing to feel like we could be a part of that process so they really give you a, a great freedom to insert some of your own experience mm -hmm. I think they react to what I give them on the bus you know they get some seats and they go oh hold on they can drive the screen over here yeah so what's the journey this year I mean I'm all looking for spoilers <laughs> but, but, but as characters, as people, what are their individual journeys this year throughout the course of the second season? For Tyler, he's trying to find his place you know, in the universe. He's, a, he's an outsider, he's not with the Klingons, he's not with Starfleet, but you're sort of the birth of them. So he's in limbo and he's just trying to find his place. But I don't think, I don't think he ever, you know, someone who's been torn apart, like, literally, <laughs> can ever do that. So it's, it's, a, it's a quite a difficult place to be in a bunch of them. So it's uh, like, he'll do his best. He's so in there. Um, I, I feel that I was like, saying on the panel a bit like I'm literally letting my hair down this season but also yeah, like we're saying these intimate scenes that there's a lot that Laurel didn't voice she is fully Klingon and there's a lot in Klingon culture about honor and sacrifice and she has adhered to those rules because that's all she knew and for a season, she had her first interaction with humans. She created a human, but she also, you know, interacted with Cornwell and found out, and then had Burnham offer her 
you know, compromise, and it's the first time she's witnessed um, real diplomacy outside of Klingon culture, and I think that she's been affected by that, and she wants to be the best chancellor she can be, and that's very, very difficult when the majority of the people she's leading don't want to see her in power. Um, but it, it does allow for, for, for our characters to connect, because when you have an ally amongst a lot of enemies, it's nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> Experience in what I would describe as our PTSD and maybe an abusive relationship when he wasn't sure what was happening with the world. Do we get to see that side of him like into these years? I think that's more that we sort of explored the most like in that last year. Now it's more about the fallout and relationship with with Morel and Burnham, how he sort of deals with that, how because he's always never he's now. It's confusing for all of them because he's drawn one way and then drawn the other way. So I think it's more about exploring that choice. The war and the PTSD is sort of coming up. And I, would, there, but. Yeah. and I will say that like uh, there's room for Laurel to continue to understand the, the gravity of what is in it and what that PTSD is, which I found I was very hopeful that that would be incorporated and it was. That, that she, again, she's a Klingon, she doesn't know that her actions reverberate a certain way in human culture. And um, I think we have to allow people who make mistakes to, to understand what they did and try and make up for that. I'm curious. Hey guys, they're trying for one last question. We're rotating tables like Star Trek speed dating. Lorelle and Burke. Lorelle and Burke. Yes. I don't know if you're going to get your season three. Spoil it. How? Where is she? Where is Burnham in her headspace at this point? Right. They kind of go the wrong way. Lorelle definitely. I mean, they never really set it out right to each other. But it's it's pretty clear to Lorelle at a certain point when when Vogue is not awaking out of Tyler that there is something or someone else that is pulling him out. And so um, I think because the only interaction she really had with Burnham was a respectful one, you know, we didn't have a cat fight, which I was very happy about. Um, I think that, and yet she's still heartbroken. She still lost the Klingon she loved. So, you know, it's, it's a mixture. What's been your most out there fan experience so far? What most out there fan experience? Well, Vegas. Vegas. It was so concentrated. It was yeah. Star Trek fans. It's yeah. bigger than by everyone else. But yeah. Germany was really fun. Germany too. was fun. There was some, yeah. some great concentration. All right, guys, we're rotating tables. Thank you, thank you very much. Long periods of time. Right. Can I get a picture, right, a picture of the two of you? Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you.